Around 75,000 years ago, a small group of people landed on Australia's northern coast, just after the Toba volcano erupted on Java, Indonesia. This was the largest eruption in the past 2 million years, and is known as the Toba catastrophe for its dire consequences, which this channel covered in depth on another video. There is considerable discussion among archaeologists as to the route taken by the first migrants to Australia, widely believed to be ancestors of the modern Aboriginal peoples. Migration took place during the closing stages of the Pleistocene, when sea levels were much lower than they are today. Repeated episodes of extended glaciation during the Pleistocene epoch, resulted in decreases of sea levels by more than 100 meters or 330 feet in Australasia. People appear to have arrived by sea during the period of glaciation, when New Guinea and Tasmania were joined to the continent of Australia. The continental coastline extended much further out into the Timor Sea, and Australia and New Guinea formed a single landmass, known as Sahul, connected by an extensive land bridge across the Arafura Sea, Gulf of Carpentaria and Torres Strait. Nevertheless, the sea still presented a major obstacle, so it is theorized that these ancient people reached Australia by island hopping. Two routes have been proposed. One follows an island chain between Sulawesi and New Guinea and the other reaches northwestern Australia through Timor Island. The timings also suggested people crossed over from South Asia at a time that was cooler and wetter, with lower sea levels allowing easier sea crossings. If they arrived around 75,000 years ago, they could have crossed the water when the sea level was low, but if they came later, around 50,000 years ago, a more likely route would be through the Moluccas to New Guinea. Given that the likely landfall regions have been under 50 meters or 165 feet of water for the last 15,000 years, it is unlikely that the timing will ever be established with certainty. These people were the first oceanic mariners, and this great southern land was their new home. Gigantic mammals roamed the plains and enormous crocodiles, giant snakes, and goannas lived in the estuaries and savannas. This is the epic story of Australia's Aboriginal people. It is a story of ancient life on the driest continent on Earth, through the greatest environmental changes experienced in human history. These include ice ages, extreme drought, and inundating seas. We should also mention that the idea that the first Australians did not have boats or the bow and arrow, and were totally isolated is a colonial myth. Native Australians used the bow and arrow, boats, and also traded with Papua New Guinea, which in turn traded with Indonesia. Explorers from India also settled in Australia 4,000 years ago, bringing the dingo, a new language, and new technologies. Australia's first inhabitants were the first people known to believe in an afterlife, cremate their dead, engrave representations of the human face, and depict human sound and emotion. They created new technologies, designed ornamentation, engaged in trade, and crafted the earliest documents of war. Ultimately, they developed a sustainable society, based on shared religious tradition and far-reaching social networks across the length and breadth of the continent. They may not have invented agriculture or advanced construction, but they lived a much better life than the freezing peasants of the European Dark Ages. What's more, the question of when people first arrived in Australia has been the subject of intense debate among archaeologists, and one with important consequences for the global story of human evolution. Australia is the endpoint of early modern human migration out of Africa and sets the minimum age for the global dispersal of humans. This event was remarkable on many fronts, as it represented the largest maritime migration ever undertaken, and the settlement of the driest continent on Earth, and required adaptation to vastly different flora and fauna. There may have been multiple migrations into the continent starting at least 75,000 years ago, with later migrations around 65,000 years ago. Analysis of DNA from the hair of an Aboriginal man who lived 100 years ago, suggests that Aboriginal Australians separated from early Asian populations sometime between 62,000 and 75,000 years ago. On the other hand, climate records have implicated humans in megafaunal population collapse at 45,000 to 43,000 years ago, a time frame that had been presumed to correlate with humans' arrival in Australia. 
artifacts have been dated between 65,000 and 80,000 years old, extending likely occupation of the area by thousands of years. The groundbreaking archaeological discovery in Australia's north has extended the known length of time Aboriginal people have inhabited the continent to at least 70,000 years, but some of the artifacts were potentially as old as 80,000 years. However, the results of this thorough study also seem to suggest that 75,000 years might be a rather conservative age estimate, and we should not at all be surprised if this date was pushed back even further in the future. Indeed, the research appends decades-old estimates about the human colonization of the continent, their interaction with megafauna, and the dispersal of modern humans from Africa and across South Asia. People got here much earlier than we thought, which means of course they must also have left Africa much earlier, to have traveled on their long journey through Asia and Southeast Asia to Australia. It also means the time of overlap with the megafauna is much longer than originally thought, maybe as much as 35,000 years. This puts to rest the idea that Aboriginal people wiped out the megafauna very quickly. The significant trove of thousands of artifacts was buried in 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet of sand and sediment on the western edge of the Arnhem Land Plateau. The discovery adds Western scientific evidence to indigenous cultural knowledge about the length of time their ancestors have occupied the land. More than 10,000 artifacts were uncovered in the zone of first occupation, including ochre and reflective paint substances, as well as the oldest unbroken ground-edge stone axes in the world, by about 20,000 years, and the oldest known seed-grinding tools in Australia. What archaeologists found was not just one kind of hatchet head, but four or five very different kinds. Remarkably, there were significant consistencies in the discovered technologies, throughout the time frame. There's a huge variety of these things spread over thousands of years. In some ways there are strong similarities with what happens at the very beginning, but there are also remarkable changes. For example, in the deepest levels of sediment, some artifacts were estimated to be about 80,000 years old or at least 95% likely to be older than 70,000 years old, the report noted. This did not necessarily indicate occupation, and there was some chance artifacts had shifted in the movement of the earth. However, the layer of earth at 65,000 years was found to be a dense occupation layer, with multiple experiments finding no suggestion the earth had shifted. The archaeological team excavated an area of 20 square meters, or 215 square feet, at the Majedbib rock shelter, and found artifacts in three distinct layers of occupation. Among the artifacts in the lowest levels they found many pieces used for seed grinding and ochre crayons that were used to make pigments. The large excavation area allowed archaeologists to pick up very rare items, such as the world's oldest known edge ground hatchets, and the world's oldest known use of reflective pigment. During the excavations, researchers recorded the three-dimensional coordinates of the stone artifacts, using a laser station. This device sits on a tripod, and uses a laser and prism to record the location of artifacts and other features at millimeter accuracy. This gives a very precise record of artifact position and layering. They analyzed these coordinates, to test previous criticisms that artifacts might have moved a lot in the sand, and found some broken artifacts that could fit back together, and by measuring the distance between these pieces we can understand how far artifacts have moved. Archaeologists collected many kinds of samples for specialized analyses, including more than 100 samples for dating. They used both radiocarbon dating and optically stimulated luminescence methods, known as OSL, to date the artifacts. Because radiocarbon dating is limited to samples younger than 50,000 years ago, they relied on OSL to help find the ages of the older lower part of the site. During the night, when it was dark, a geochronologist used long tubes to bore into the sand layers, where they found artifacts and collected 56 samples. Back at the laboratory, they painstakingly measured more than 28,500 individual grains of sand and used a laser to determine their ages. After getting results, they sent several samples to independent labs to double-check the work, and the results came back as verified. 
OSL methods estimate the time elapsed since sand grains were last exposed to sunlight. Australian archaeologists have been wary of OSL methods, because often in the past OSL involved sand grains measured together in a little group, resulting in ages that were not very accurate. To get more precise ages, scientists measured thousands of sand grains individually, rather than in a group. They also had another laboratory analyze some samples to make sure the results were reliable. The result is a convincing age for the settlement of Australia of at least 75,000 years. Moreover, these new dates throw light on a few puzzles in the overall picture of human evolution. The dates suggest that modern humans and Homo floresiensis in eastern Indonesia may have coexisted for 25,000 years, with the last sign of the hobbits occurring 50,000 years ago. This means that the arrival of modern humans did not necessarily cause other ancient human species to become extinct immediately. Until recently we knew very little about the technology and lifestyles of the first Aboriginal people. The oldest artifacts help to tell this story. They indicate that the earliest Aboriginal inhabitants of Australia were innovative people who, like humans everywhere on Earth, developed solutions to new problems and engaged in symbolic and artistic expression. Currently, the oldest known rock art in the world is dated to 40,000 years ago in Sulawesi, Indonesia, a possible stepping stone to Australia. But the abundant ground ochre and use of mica indicates that artistic expression took place in the region much earlier. Researchers also found new forms of stone tools such as edge ground hatchet heads, and even the grinding stones used to sharpen them. These were useful in cutting bark and wood, shaping wooden tools and extracting difficult to obtain foods from trees. The grinding stones from the site indicate a range of fruits, seeds, animals and other plants were ground up for food. These are the oldest known examples of seed grinding stones found in Australia, if not the world. In addition to uncovering leftovers of an ancient campfire and archaic mortars and pestles, researchers also found flaked stone tools and painting material. They also unearthed the earliest known examples of edge ground axes, which are stone axes that would have had handles, which were 20,000 years older than those found anywhere else in the world. In ancient fireplaces from the site archaeologists also recovered pieces of burnt pandanus nuts, fruit seeds and yams which give clues to the earliest plant foods consumed at the site. Some of these foods continue to be eaten today by Aboriginal people in the top-end region of Northern Australia. The results of the study helped to show the unique place of Australia in understanding how and where modern humans appeared. Archaeologists were shocked by the richness of material that they were finding at the site, including intact fireplaces, a ring of grindstones around it, and human burials in their graves. These new ages suggest that Australia was settled well before modern humans entered Europe about 45,000 years ago. This means that the earliest art and symbolism in Europe is of limited relevance to understanding ancient art and symbolic expression in the rest of the world. Therefore, the findings provide further insight into the complex capabilities of ancient humans, as well as the chronology of when they migrated from Africa and spread across the world. The findings provide evidence against a prevailing theory that people rapidly drove Australia's largest animals to extinction shortly after arriving on the continent.